to meet Dawn Jenkins. She is a, a farrier and a uh, horse person. And she's got a lot of I have a legendary career. I work with legends, both horses and people. Yeah. I work for actors. And yeah, yeah. I've worked for, you know, just wonderful people. And Hello, laddie. And yeah. it's Especially a beat-up car, so I don't have to worry about it in L.A. Yeah. And yesterday, um, a goat was on the top of the car <laughs> at my friend's. Okay, so we're uh, in Fraser Park, and we're going to meet Don Jenkins. She is a farrier and a horse breeder and lots of other things. And we're going to hear <laughs> a little bit uh, about her story, and she's going to show us uh, how to shoe a horse. And I think we'll first uh, check out her... Uh, her uh, horseshoeing rig over here. <laughs> <laughs> so Don, nice to meet hey, you. Good Jason. to see you, Jason. Yeah. And then tell us about your uh, your your fancy yes, rig here. This is my stealth <laughs> shoeing rig. So, I, so it's in, perfect. So yeah, tell us what are all, all of my shoeing okay. tools. So my uncle was a famous farrier, and he got me going. Yeah, so yeah. it turns out that there's different methods. Of shoeing, Jason, would you please hold hold on to these shoes, okay. which I pulled from a horse just around the okay. street. Um, that that is what that poor horse had on. Now this is an illustration of how horses don't throw a shoe; they actually pull the shoe. Oh. Do you know how much torque it took for her to pull that heel? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. But this is basically this same size shoe, and. Which which shoe would you prefer, Jason? If you well, were the horse, yeah. I mean, would this you is prefer a that one fit to... <laughs> than this <laughs> yeah. clog? Yeah. This thing weigh two and a half pounds each. Yeah, this is light. That one's light, and it's built like a Nike. I chased down a farrier education because my uncle got me started, okay. but I had to know more. Yeah. So. And how long have you been doing it now? Um. Well, I started trimming in in 1990. Okay. So, okay. so this is the anvil that my uncle told me to get. He goes, don't buy an anvil, Don. Buy is one of these. It's called a stall jack. He said, I've shod thousands of horses off of this thing right here. Yeah. So, so again, this is my very stealth rig <laughs> that has horseshoes in it and Got everything, everything I need. you need. And then this is my magical design. Okay. That's my Where hoof stand. Put the hoof on, yeah? Yeah, I had this designed and I have a welders, different welders through the years make them up for me. Okay. I actually sell them. Okay. And they're great. So being a female, I have different body ergonomics than a male. Yeah. Most of the farrier tools are made for guys. Okay. So the, the stand that everyone else uses is about that tall because for guys, they don't want to bend over far. Yeah. But it turns out females... Because your center of gravity is different. <laughs> yeah. We're made for um, lifting babies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, honey. And now is when I have to remember to breathe because I'm entering the zone of the horse and I can't come in like a human. I've got to come in soft and ready to interact with my horse. All right, so I actually cleaned these feet out yesterday, so there's not much in there, but I am going to spray them and then put it down. So what's cool is with a good, smart horse, they know what I'm doing and they cooperate. Hence, I gave her those cookies, remember? Because <laughs> I want to buy her cooperation and her to be happy. I okay. see you grabbing her tail a lot. Yeah, they like this. Okay. This is just like me snuffling with her, like I'm part of her herd. Oh, okay. So this is part of relaxing her into buddy mode. Okay. Into that. And I've, I'm right here with her. And she's relaxed, and I'm relaxed. And I'm putting my stand, but I'm wrapping my body into her body for support. This is an old rasp. We call it our hot rasp. I do not hot shoe, I cold shoe. I did own a forge, but I was terrified of it. <laughs> so my daughter took it for um, making crafts. And I got to lend it to Uncle Ink for a number of years because he had a coal, coal forge and they don't allow you to use those anymore in California. Really? So I gave him... I have to go back in horse mode and soften myself in order to do this well. This is probably the hardest thing that I'll do today is pull the old shoes.
they're really on there. <laughs> like when the um, when the days are short, they don't grow as much. Hoof. Yeah, so it's something you still enjoy doing, and so you've really got the, love it. And the horses that you like to work with, yeah. the clients that you like to work with. And I have wonderful people that I work for and really great horses. Yeah. And I think we all deserve a point in our career where we can kind of pick and choose yeah. what works best for us and not stress out. Yeah. So how many um, farriers are working in their 70s? Lots. Yeah. I just talked to Myron McLean. He's turning 80. Wow. 80. Nice. My uncle went to 84. Or something okay. Like that. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, if you love it. Yeah. And the whole thing is you got to love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's about love. Yeah. yeah. And, and we sprayed some water on her foot. So first thing I'm going to do is sight her foot. I'm going to hang the hawk loosely. And most horses will grow a little higher on the inside, which she has done. And we'll see if she'll be happy leaving her limb on my foot. So that's my lowest hoof stand right there. Hey, your foot. <laughs> now when the dog comes, he'll eat the frog. This is the frog of the foot. It's like a pad, but there are no nerves. There must be down somewhere below it, but on the outside part, like I'm trimming, it doesn't hurt her at all. But you can't go too deep, right? Yeah, but you wouldn't. Okay. That's why you learn all these things. You're right. <laughs> there's, there's an actual reason for learning yeah. it. So she's got a lot of toe right now. And so I'm just going to go in and try and get through the dead sole, which is kind of chalky. You can see this kind of chalky looking white, which is the dead sole. This is a nipper that I'm using, a hoof nipper. This tool runs over 200 bucks. Oh, wow. And it's a fabulous tool. <laughs> then this is my knife. I use what's called a loop knife. And I like the new loop knife better than the other kind of furrier knives that you might have seen. This one is made by Hall. They're out of Canada. Okay. It's a really nice knife. Hey. Good girl. Okay. She doesn't want to be low, so I'm going to take her higher up. And people always ask me, well, how do you know how much to take? It's like, well, that's why you learn all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like flying an airplane, which, by the way, I am a pilot. I have my pilot's license. <laughs> so, really, horses are the closest thing to flying. Really? On the ground. Yeah, because they, they actually fly. They have a phase of their gait when all four feet are off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, And it's very subtle riding a horse, and it's very subtle flying an airplane. It's just little motions. Little control. Little, and with a yeah. horse, it's mostly how I'm sitting, how I'm breathing. Come on. Good girl. That's our girl. So this is called a Black Master Rasp. It's my favorite rasp. Everybody's got their own favorite. Horse. She's still a little high on the inside, so I'm going to take that down. At this point, you're just kind of looking from experience and yeah. kind of... So remember the nubs on the shoe? So the nubs on the shoe need to go to the center of articulation of her foot. So that means my shoe's going to come back a little bit. Jason, can you get that pen card yeah. off? Thank you. See, I need someone else with me. <laughs> so. Oh, so that's how far back you cut the hook. Yeah. Okay. Because her center of articulation is about right there. Yep. And that is very helpful to have that built into the oh, shoe. Yeah. That's one of Gene Ovenick's natural balance shoes. Okay. It's very intelligent. 
So this is like an eraser. I'm just erasing what I don't want. I actually teach people how to shoe and trim. I've taught a lot of people. Okay, just have to tap this heel. A smidgy poo. <laughs> this is female farrier and the dragon. <laughs> I have my own language. Yeah. It takes a smidgy poo. <laughs> so to get that smidgy poo, this is called the hardy hole. H-A-R-D-Y. Okay. Like Laurel and Hardy. Yep. And anvils have those and so does my stall jack. So that was probably enough. Yeah, it works. So we're gonna put peanut butter on the shoe. Peanut that butter. <laughs> one has been in the car and it's cold. I will use, hopefully, a softer piece. Is that a, is that a thing that other farriers do? Um, only if they've talked to me. <laughs> okay. I'm not aware of anyone else that does it. I keep trying to tell people, and they go, oh. Okay. So what what is that stuff used for by other people? Um, for packing under a pad. Oh, okay. Seven. It's a little so longer. So I use the number fives in the toe, and the sixes behind. Okay. And I rarely lose a shoe. The Kneeling is actually the best part. <laughs> if you've done everything else right. Hmm. If you haven't, it's not. <laughs> in the very I usually start with a diagonal of nails, as in, I'll start with one toenail and one heel nail. <laughs> I would never have thought of this if I hadn't had ink in my family. I would not have come up with this idea <laughs> to do this as a career. I always wonder how, how girls get started, <laughs> but it was basic necessity for me. <clears throat> well, yeah, you, you needed, you didn't like how the other guy did it. Yeah. And so note that the shoe is staying on without me holding oh, yeah. it, <laughs> yeah. which is awesome. Oh. So we, get, we do it kind of soft while it's starting, and then we intensify. Okay, now the tip is coming out. Can you see the little tip? It's over on that side. So I'm going to wring the tip off. It's the tip of the nail. Um, does anybody here want to hammer a nail? It's really fun. I'll get it started. <laughs> I'll try it. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll hold it. You just come on in. Okay. I'll get my hand out of the way though. Okay. Yep. Now yeah, really have at it. When I first started, my uncle said, you hammer like a girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, that's about right. I good, don't want to hit job. you or the... Yeah, very good job. <laughs> Nicely done. Hey, no. Guess what she gets when we're done? Another cookie? Yeah. <laughs> she knows it. Yeah. She's like, I'm only doing this because of the cookie. I tolerate this for the cookie. Yeah. Great. And this is the block. So I'm gonna block the nails. So right now they're sticking out. Do you wanna come and take a little picture of them? So I stick the block under the nail tip. Okay, so I'm gonna bend these nails a little bit farther right now and get them started and now they're too long now they're just right this part's really fun you just squeeze and it makes what's called a clinch So you can see my packing material, and it's fantastic. And she's got a nice shoe job. Yeah. And she's still got heel on both sides, even though it looks like it's a little more that way. I'm happy with it. Looks and good. She, yeah. She looks yeah, good. yeah. Well, Don, that's awesome. Thank you so much for letting us interrupt you and, and come up and thank you so much. That was really fun. Yeah, it was great. I really <laughs> I enjoyed it. Too. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, uh, we'll come up and... and, and uh, come up and we'll mess around some Do more. it again some other time. <laughs> yeah, we'll do some more horse stuff. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome.